Okay, so we at day 75 of our one hour day workout. I got on my Duchess t-shirt. If you click down in the um, description, you can see the D Teespring um, link where, you know, if you want to support me, you want to get one, um, you can do that, okay? Um, before I forget, um, like, subscribe, leave me a comment about different topics and stuff. Engage in with me um, if you're watching my video. I don't have many viewers right now. Very low, but we're going to keep on going. And that brings me to, like, my song when he was out there with De Deborah Dana. And I was watching him. And I just, he, he just seemed like it was just so few people out there. I just wanted to go run out there with him, you know what I'm saying? But my family had its share of uh, front line and representing the community and it backfiring on us. Okay, so Tamir Rice seen um, Tamika Maori, I guess on the Grammys or whatever. I don't do all of that watching TV and stuff. I be mostly on YouTube. A lot of the information I get is, you know, I do a lot of YouTube. Uh, I don't, I'm not really a TV, you know. So, um, yeah, Tamir Rice, uh, the 12 year old who was. Uh, Playing, I guess, with a fake gun or whatever, got gunned down by a, a police officer that was around, a, a young rookie, you know, around 26 years old, you know. I, I would say he's pretty young, so, you know, he probably thought, you know, it was a real gun. I don't know, I guess, um, I didn't check into the whole case or remember the whole case, but I was listening to my son and Tamika Maori. They were on Vlad TV. And I was glad that um, Vlad put it on, posted it on his platform, even though after, you know, everybody was blaming Vlad for um, uh, his interviews causing people to um, get convicted after they come on his show and tell um, their criminal stories which is, you know, sometimes still in effect. Um, let me get my glasses. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Okay, because I, I wrote down, I sketched a little bit of notes, but um, yeah, what I was saying was that I'm, I, I hope that my son uh, and the rest of those guys that was uh, cool with um, Vlad C, you know, after the Nick Cannon interview with Casting Over, as soon as that interview came on, um, Nick Cannon did worse than Vlad. He was asking about his uh, gang affiliation, if that was still on, if he was still involved with that. And, you know, I don't think Nick Cannon was purposely, you know, t trying to trip him up or anything like that. But um, now y'all see that, you know, you could you could you could make an interview or whatever the situation is, and as people want to expose, um, they want to look gangster and expose their uh, criminal activity because they know this is getting out to the public. So it's going to give them the gangster persona that they want, but they don't realize that the police, you know, the feds is you know watching too. So you have to watch what you say, you know. Um, and it's enough is enough with all that gangster stuff, you know, because we only killing each other and hurting each other and holding each other um, back. So um, Tamika Maori came on. Uh, uh, they did their regular show. Let's see. I, got, I wrote some notes down here. Street politicians. So my son and Tamika Maori are like 
activists, you know, for justice of uh, uh, police brutality and different things like that. And whenever they present themselves and they represent victims, you know, it become a, you know, a widely national, like they, they, their names, you know, are known, you know, so the word is going to get out. And once they say something, they have other people that, you know, go on posts and stuff like that. And it just, you know, Black Lives Matter, everybody's going to get involved. And, you know, the stories is basically not going to be swept under the rug once, you know, they attach their names um, to it. So they did one of their um, shows, and they said it's it's really basically off topic just to um, clear up um, the matter of uh, Tamir uh, Rice's mother seeing her at the Grammys. And um, like I said, again, I don't watch TV, so I didn't see the Grammys. Um, but I heard that, you know, I guess she was up there or whatever. I don't know if she was dancing, singing, or making a speech, but um, they say she was there. But you cannot expect somebody just to be in the front lines and do all the hard work, and then you don't want to see them, you know, c celebrate. Um, their progress from the work that they put in. You understand what I'm saying? Like, oh, you just want her to be out on the front lines. Do you know what the front lines mean? The front lines mean that, you know, okay, we having a demonstration today, you know, and we representing, you know, these are people that they, the, um, the victims that they probably never knew, never met, you know, parents of people that they never knew in their life. They're just going to come out and put their bodies, you know, in the front line. And if they really caught some resistance or anything like that from law enforcement, they're going to get hurt. They might possibly get killed, you know. And just like one time, um, Al Sharpton got stabbed. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't, you can't just take it lightly and say, oh, they're in this for the money. You know what I'm saying? They they in this because when my son was out there with Deborah Dana, it was like very few people out there. You know what I'm saying? And then I guess he got with Tamika Maori, other people. You know, he's already a rap star, whatever the situation is. But you know, um, I'm just proud to see the progress. And you know, when they do do they. Um, protests and the demonstrations and stuff like that, you know, I'm glad that it's more fuller, you know, I'm, I'm glad that more people is coming out and I'm happy that they have a voice. I am not against it. Uh, they're young. They don't have to do this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, they don't have to put their lives on the line for anybody. You understand what I'm saying? Um, that's what, first thing you have to understand is front lines. If you ever, if you ever been on the front lines of demonstrations, and I've been on front lines of demonstrations that went left, you understand what I'm saying? And, and all up in the commotion, you know what I'm saying? So, um, that's one thing that I wanted to say. I want y'all to understand, you know, that what they're doing and what they're taking on is not easy. Maybe they make it look easy, you know what I'm saying? And some of the stuff may be trial and error, you know? And you understand what I'm saying? So she's stepping up and she, she's speaking out for the people and she said, let it burn and stuff like that. You know, that's out of, you know, you know, we need them to realize that this situation is bad. It's horrible. It needs to stop. You know what I'm saying? Not that she want to burn down people's businesses and houses and stuff like that, but she's just, at that point, you know, she was, you know, saying that people, this is 
to the level of where people is fed up. And, you know, if it have to come to that, you know, for the government to make changes and to realize that maybe police officers need more training or they need to check for discrimination more better than, you know, um, so be it. You know, think things is gonna. You know, things is gonna. Terrible things have to happen in order for changes to be made. You know. And so he was a twelve years old. Um, and as far as what I get from their um, their um, their um, little interview there, that um, she was saying that. Um, Tamir Rice's mother didn't uh, win, you know, the case. And I guess it's because um, maybe they didn't find negligent in an officer and maybe her son was playing with something that looked so real, you know what I'm saying? And a fascination with guns and street and gangster, you know, I don't know if the gun, the um, Tamir had, um, like mental disabilities or so, anything like that, but you know, one thing a black kid or, or, or know or black young man know is do not play with no toy guns or anything, not even a cell phone, you know. Don't just be, you know, because they mistake cell phones for guns, you understand what I'm saying? So I guess it wasn't like a strong case because he was actually out there playing like a I guess gangster, or, you know, he playing with a, a gun or whatever the situation is. If you're going to do that, play with your family in your backyard or something like that, but out in the street um, where the police could see you and shoot you down is not um, really a good idea. So so maybe um, she lost the case um, because of that. Um, and then I Googled her name and everything like that, and it turned out that she ended up in... Um, in a shelter because she had to move away from the neighborhood or whatever where where it happened so she had to make a um immediate move you know and i guess the only way that she could do that is um you know just going you know i got to get out i'm going to a shelter instead of going to somebody else's house or you know i guess that was a a median in between going uh a temporary housing until she get find another permanent. Um, so she been through some stuff. Um, and I guess um, I didn't really hear what she had to say, but I guess it was, you know, Tamika Mowry said, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm going to respect her wishes. I'm not going to say um, her son's name um, in, you know, in my presentations anymore, you know. Like she said, and most YouTubers and everybody, journalists and everybody else, do run down the list, you know, when it comes down to uh, the victims of police brutality. Or if you're talking about, um, you know, because so many rappers uh, be killing each other, you know, a lot of times when, you know, you do a video or you talk about it, you know, you list the names of, you know, because it's so many, you know, um, you're just trying to prove your point that, you know, it's out of hand. So you list a bunch of people. Um, there's been questions about money raised, um, uh, how much money they've been receiving and how they operate and or what have you. Um, I guess people donate, and there is going to, uh, this situation, like I learned with Al Sharpton, there's always going to be, you know, another incident, you understand? So you can't just say, well, okay, uh, we got a million dollars raised from the recent police brutalities, we're going to take all the families and we're going to divide it up and give all the money away, and then the bank account is empty, so if something else come up, you don't have no overhead capital to go out there and represent the next victim. 
You understand what I'm saying? So it's like a business, and you have to operate it. Uh, it's an organization that gets, uh, I guess they got um, non-profit organizations, um, and they, you know, they get donations or fundings or whatever the situation is, but um, this is a never-ending situation. I learned that from Al Sharpton. Okay, so when this situation came up, um, it reminded me of Al Sharpton and Tawana Brawley, okay? So uh, she said that white officers or white men raped her, put feces on her, tied her in a bag, plastic or something like that. And so this story went out and everybody was going crazy, like, you know, like, what? What happened to you, you know? That's like taking us back in time, you know? With, with um, you know, we thought we kind of like got past those days, you know? Um, and so Tawana Brawley, it turned out that Al Sharpton believed that, you know, he was duped, He uh, that she lied about the situation. But I'm gonna tell you a story. And I don't, you know, I'm a long-winded person, so I don't like to be too long-winded, but I'm not working out right now because I just want to uh, get this, these points that I have, because this is important off my chest. But I was called to a friend's house to hang out in South Bronx. Um, this was like years ago, you know what I'm saying? So the situation that happened with her, I think it was in the late 80s or something like that, 87 or something, but um, this was around in... I think the early 90s, I was called to a, my friend's house. One of my friends said, come hang out and have some drinks and stuff like that. So I, I came over. And so I'm walking through the house and they introducing me to, you know, a couple of people sitting around and stuff like that. And guess who was in the house? So Tawana Brawley was sitting on the couch. And then my girlfriend is saying, you know, I'm not going to call no names, but my girlfriend was saying, do you know who that is? So I'm like, damn, she look familiar, but I can't pinpoint, you know, how you could pinpoint, you know, your old friends or something like that. I couldn't pinpoint, you know, uh, who she was. And then um, they were saying that was Tawana Brawley. And she started smiling and laughing and she had her legs crossed and she was smirking the whole time. And, you know, I said, for real? I said, oh, shoot, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I don't re recall discussing the whole situation, whether she lied, whether it was true. I just know she was in the house hanging out where my friend was when I got over there. <laughs> and um, she was laughing, uh, you know, when I introduced and said her name, she was laughing and smiling like, you know, yeah, she got a bit of celebrity and fame, you know out of uh, the situation that happened, you know. But I just I felt it was kind of strange that she was, you know, out there hanging out. But anyway, with Al Sharpton, you know, it's constantly, it was constant. He got stabbed and everything. It was, you know, constant cases, constant, constant, constant cases. You know, every time this thing is never gonna end. <laughs> so anybody who wanna be a political activist or whatever the situation is, you have a, you know, a everlasting job on your hands. Okay, you have an everlasting job on your hands. It's not gonna stop. So. Um, it's not something that, you know, because we have the deaths of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X's and whoever stand up for black people usually, you know, uh, get assassinated. You understand what I'm saying? So everybody don't really want to do that, you know. My family come from um, fighting for minority jobs and guys coming out of jail, you know, the construction organizations, that's what my family is into. Um, I don't dove too deep into it because that's really my sister's situation. And if she wants to talk about uh, the particulars of that, then um, she could. But I see Tamika Mallory as, you know, how my sister, my sister was very young, you know, when she started, I think around 14 or 15. And Tamika Mallory, um, I was surprised to hear that she said that um, 25 years. 
you know, because we didn't know, well, I didn't know when she started, you know. So I guess she was at this thing for a little while, you know what I'm saying? So um, uh, uh, props to her for that, for, you know, elevating and succeeding in um, her stance and uh, being bold and brave enough to stand on the front lines uh, for our people. Now, there's a lot of things that's happening with other things other than police brutality and people are wondering why don't y'all represent uh, the rappers you know, that's getting killed. Why Why don't you uh, have a problem or speak out, you know, against uh, the black-on-black -black crime and the rappers killing each other? Why don't you come at the industry and um, try to um, make them put some rules and regulations in place in order for people to be in the industry to stop, you know, to slow down the killing because that's more vast than a police uh, brutality. But um, I guess they got the agenda of, you know, what they're representing. So I'm not going to try to push you. I'm not pushing you and I'm not going to be fighting you to say uh, deal with this, this, that, and other because enough Enough is enough. Uh, uh, anybody putting themselves out on the front line is, um, you know, one aspect is enough uh, to deal with. So the job, like I said, is a dangerous job. Uh, but there's like organizations uh, that's formed, you know, to do certain things. And some of those organizations have a good front, but, you know, like we're gonna get jobs for people, we out here, we try to get jobs for people, but then behind the scenes, you know, they blocking people from getting jobs. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, things like that, you know. And there's some people, political activists, that's out there, and they just out there for the, you know, I guess to raise money and I guess for the travel or whatever the situation is, you know. So you have those. But with my son and Tamika Mallory, um, at least with my son, you know, I seen, you know, how he was out there with De Deborah Dana and, you know, he was out there with his kids and, you know, it wasn't hardly no, and, you know, he was at the precinct, you know, you don't bother with the police, you know what I'm saying? I was like, please don't let them kill this boy out here, you know? And every time I see them on the front line, I'd be like, please. Then Yandy formed in, you know what I'm saying? Like people that really don't have to, that already have a celebrity status and on TV and doing hip hop shows and stuff that don't really have to come to the front line. You know, something happened in the jails and Yandy just jumped out. You know, everybody have it in their heart, you know, to want to jump out. But the statement that I had wrote this down and um, the statement that I wanted to say you know, from her having to come out and speak about the ill um, uh, rumors going around about her. It be your own people to knock you down after you've put your whole life into helping them. I question sometimes, is the fight worth it? Okay? You know, because, like I said, my family, my family was fighting for minorities too. 
And if anybody know about uh, organizations, construction organizations, coalitions, you know that we've been in the paper and uh, uh, front pages and all kind of through the uh, uh, daily news and all kind of stuff, uh, posts about the fight in, between one another when really the organization started out to get jobs from you know they didn't have they was working in the community but they were didn't have enough um they didn't you know some jobs didn't have no blacks <laughs> you know no spanish on the jobs but they the job the construction site would be right here in our community we needed jobs too and you know they was making good money construction money was good money or they might have one black or something like that so we you know we had to make them cover um so many minorities on the job compared to how many, you know, whites and stuff on the job. And then if they didn't have no females, you know, then, you know, we had to force, like, you know, you need to put a black female, you know, you need to diver diversify, you know, uh, your um, hiring, your employment, your employees. So I really understand the situation. I, I've been in the front line where things kicked off, where organizations fight against organizations and, you know, they batting each other side of, upside the head and, you know, just a, a wild melee. I've been in them. You know, it's, it's not a sweet thing being on the front line. So all the YouTubers that's, you know, um, you know, um, talking from home and, um, criticizing them um, for being at the Grammys, you know. So would you just want them to work hard and put their life on the line and you don't never want to see them celebrate um, their hard work and their successes? You know, I would say that's wrong. The last thing I want to talk about is when I went to the Million, Million Men's March. I meant um, the Million Youth March. And I believe the guy was Khalid Muhammad that was speaking, and he was talking tough, you know. And they say he's anti-Semitic, so, um, you know, the, the riot police was behind the stage. They were waiting. They had helicopters. I think I could touch the helicopter. It frightened me so much. The helicopters came down low over our heads, and I was looking up, and the officers that was inside the helicopters were laughing because I was startled, I was frightened, it was so low to my head, and I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, shit, what's about to happen? They, they about to, you know, he was just up there, freedom of speech, talking his speech and everything like that, but they was just, oh, it was a curfew, that's what it was. They had a time that it was supposed to end, and if it didn't end at that time, you know, as soon as the clock hit, they was ready to shut the place down. And what I had did was, and because it said youth, I had brought my daughter with me, and my daughter was a little girl, you know what I'm saying, at the time, you know what I'm saying? And I brought um, uh, one of my workers, he supervised my crew, and good thing I had that man with me. And we made our way to the front, you know, like the stage was right there and then we was right here, you know, and we was right in the front. And then on the sides, I started noticing the riot police was behind the stage. I was like, oh shoot. And then he was talking crazy, like Khalid Muhammad was like, and if they do this, do that. And you know, don't quote me on nothing that anybody said, but he was like letting you know, like, if they try your hand, then you, you know, you fight back. You know what I'm saying? And he was talking real hard. And then when the clock hit, um, the riot police came, and I was off to the side, and there was a fence with a hole in the fence, you know, and it was an empty lot. So um, being that I had my daughter with me um, and the riot police was coming, I had to jump in that hole, and the guy that I was with, he put my daughter in that, you know, help my daughter through the fence and help me through the fence and get it, you know, in that slit in the fence. And we had to uh, run for cover. I'm going to tell you the truth. We had to run for cover in that uh, Million Youth March in Harlem. 
Okay, so y'all stop with it. Y'all stop with it because it's not an uh, easy uh, situation. And if they are gaining, get, getting some kind of gains or getting some kind of, um, you know, moving on up in life uh, from it, then they deserve it. Okay? They do deserve it. So um, I didn't even start stretching or working out because I just wanted to get that off my chest. My grandbaby is here today. And I told her, leave me alone until I get this this part that I want off my chest. And I said, I'm going to do this before, you know, before I do anything else. Because some people might, you know, my one-hour-a-day workouts is an hour. The War Against Obesity is an LLC. So anybody who wants to support that, you know, you can look me up. It's an LLC in New York. And it's the... Um, Try to, you know, I am working trial and ever trying to find a way where we can um, use different products to um, reduce weight, okay? Where we can keep our bodies in shape and, and be more healthier, you know, to war against obesity. So what I do is one hour a day workout, you know, because there was a time I was depressed, stressed, I had, I was working for the police department. I worked uh, traffic, you know, I got hit by a car. So I was injured going to pain management and everything. And um, I, I had other things going on that was stressing me mentally. And, you know, I mean, I was at odds with everybody, family, friends. I didn't have anybody but my grandbaby. You know what I'm saying? I found myself in, like really in a situation that I thought was like kind of like biblical. You know, and um, was talking to God, and the answers was coming to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, why do I find myself by myself, God? What have I done wrong? You know? You know, but the people that disappeared don't need to be in my life if they don't want to see me grow in business or they're jealous of you know, my attempts as at, you know, being successful at business. You know, you don't need those people around you. You know, so that's my testimony and that's my story and it happened to me and, you know, I talk about it a lot and I need to get it off my chest instead of laying up in the bed being um, depressed and stressed out. So like I said, I don't really watch TV. I'll be looking at different, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube and you can learn from and different people. So I, I was, um, the other day I found uh, a Jewish priest and he's somebody that, you know how, how the Bible is. You know, you can't really understand it when you read it. You can't, you can't. So you have to, you know, usually have somebody break it down to you, and that's what he do, you know. So, and he and he's pretty good at it, you know. He be trying to, you know, simplify it, but at the end of one of his videos, I think this is pronounced Ignatia. He was saying, if you are stressed. If your soul, you know, you know, needs, um, you know, relaxing or, or what have you, it's, uh, like I said, before you take anything, because yes, um, what the, uh, a couple of days ago, I showed you, y'all, the diet, um, pills that I take. I bought five bottles at one time because if, you know, if you, um, if you have to lose more than 30 pounds, you're going to need a lot of bottles. So I just bought all mine at one time. This is like an advanced weight loss. It's supposed to burn stuff and fat and I got that in my stomach. And enhance energy and focus. Help suppress appetite. Okay, so 
It also has a booster in there that's supposed to help you energize. Okay. So, um, I'm testing these products. <laughs> I'm the guinea pig. <laughs> and then, along with that, they just gave me some vitamin D's. Um, gave it a little discount on some vitamin D's. So, you know... And then also, I was showing this about two days ago. Flaxseed oil. And this is good for the digestive system. It's organic, cardiovascular, digestive health, and joint health. So it could help you with pain. Yesterday, I stay bloated, and I haven't been on a scale lately because... When you drink water, that weight adds on. And yesterday, I drank like a gallon of water. You understand? I, I drank a gallon of water. So, you know, you can do your one-hour-a-day workout, but it's your diet. Now, with, with this here, they say you can eat. You can eat. But what I notice is that these products promote... Uh, bowel movement, you know, I could feel it in my system, and you have to drink a lot of water, you know, drink your water, you know what I'm saying, because you can't take these uh, supplements without, you know, letting them dilute in your body and, and, and work through, they work through with water much better, and um, these right here, you take five of them, it's a funny way that these dispense. Okay, so I already took um, about an hour ago. So I don't know if they say take it. I gotta look at it. It might be three times a day. Uh, which one did I open already? Is it this one? I think it's this one. But I what I wanted to show you about these is that you turn it upside down and you twist and then, you know, the pill, until you get five pop in this little spot right here, they start coming down. I'll just put my next dosage in here already. How many I got in there? Three. Yeah, three. How many is in there? Four. Five. Okay, so you just when you get them, when you if you take the cap off, it's gonna be like how you get these things out. But if you don't read the instructions, you have to twist. So this is good for you know stress, emotional stress relief. It tells you right there, emotional stress relief, and uh, it'll calm your soul. Your moodiness, your grieving, your irritability. You know? So um, I'm just trying this for the first time. So y'all don't have to do everything I'm doing. You know, when I say, you know, I'm going to give you all my secrets and stuff like that. And I say join. And some things I say, um, I'm going to save it for numbers you know, what I'm doing behind the scenes. But that one right there, I said, people probably already know about that. You know, people probably already, you know, this, you know, I found this on Facebook and stuff like that. So that's that's running different keto um, diets and everybody know about flaxseed oil, uh, flaxseed and chia uh, seeds and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, this is 1,300 milligrams and stuff. So. You want to say hi, grandbabies? Hi. <laughs> okay, so that's my, my partner. That my, that's my partner in uh, this whole thing here. Hey, Grandma. <clears throat> she like to do Q&As, but <clears throat> I told her today, don't mess me up oh, when, I, when I'm speaking about the Tamika Mallory. Don't, don't jump in because I want to get the, all my thoughts off.
about that situation. And I want people to stop dogging her out because, you know, you have the men that, you know, could be on the front line with her, helping her, and they at home making YouTube videos, disgracing her, <laughs> you know. Also, I ordered these. I am trying to do me some push-ups. And I just can't do them. And I thought this would make it easier, but I think these make it harder. You know, so I may have to start out like on my knees. So let's see if we can. Uh, try to focus the camera to the floor. Well, today, most of my um, day has been spent on um, my son and Tamika, so whatchamacallit. Um, I know we supposed to be the, the workout, but y'all go ahead and do your one hour workout a day because um, I have to hit on certain topics. So we're going to move this out of the way. Oh, this and we're going to try, like I said, try to do some push-ups. Watch it. You got something you want to say, Mom? I have a question. What? Why did, why did your cousin um, betray you? Why, why did your cousin do that? Because he, I guess he was hungry. Okay, watch out. Um, she asked me why did, why did my cousin betray me? A story I always talk about. Um, I might have to bring my legs to this tripod there. She said, "Why did he betray me?" <laughs> but you know, some things. Some things is a blessing in disguise, you know. It hurt me real bad because we grew up in the same household, and I wouldn't do that to any of uh, my cousins or anybody that, you know, uh, that I grew up with. I, I would never think to do, do anything harmful to them, you know what I'm saying, to hurt them uh, physically or, or their pockets. Okay, so I got these... Can you see them? I put the tripod down, but this thing, let me see if I could uh, bend um, this thing down some more. Uh, it can't go down no more. It's down as far as it can go. Uh, okay. Let me see. Push that back. Okay, yeah, y'all can see me now. Okay, so I bought these. Uh, they're called Perfect Push-Ups. These have been around a long time. I've seen some YouTubers that said that they haven't been using them. They had them for 10 years. And, you know, sometimes you think, move, yes, man. Cashy's in the house. That's my grandbaby, y'all. Sometimes you think you're getting something or purchasing something, and people, people been having this for 10 years. Well, if they've been having this for 10 years, that's good because Uh, that's good because um, that means that they're durable. They stay in good shape. You know, they're stable on on the carpet and everything like that. So they're not slippery or nothing. The floor is over here. They're stable on the floor too. Ooh, and I'm on my knees. I, I'm doing the girly push-ups. upper body to strengthen my upper body before, you know. And then if I try to um, get up, I can't do it. But if I try to do the men's push-ups. Um, but these are supposed to help with your wrist. 
move, um, get off of that. I want to push it back a little bit more. Up on my toes. I can't go down all the way, <coughs> but I'm up on them. <coughs> Woo! I can't come down like all the way. I can't come down all the way, but. <sighs> I want to work my core. So I think you're supposed to have your shoulders down. I think these align your, your arms the way they're supposed to be. So let's try to get up there again. <laughs> Anybody know any tricks? Getting me going with my own. Um, let me try them without it. Let me try some push ups without them. Because I think I could. Let me take off the gloves because I could feel a thread of the glove hurting my hand. So the war against obesity, like I said, is a real business. You can look it up on the New York State and search, okay? So it's supposed to be easier if you do it with your hands. But me, I don't want to hurt my wrist. Ooh. Oh, to me, it's about the same. Oh. So... These perfect push-ups came in today. The gloves is better when I'm on using these perfect push-ups. You know, you gotta practice and practice and practice and practice, but can't bring my arms down. Whew. But uh, this is the box that came today. So basically it was unboxing today. Um, you should do the boxing thing. You got a lady in the house. You should do, you should, um, do this one. Oh, it's upside down. You should do this one. There's a lady in there doing it. So it's not like the woman can't do it. And you can start off with the um, on your knees, which I guess is my best bet. What? I haven't been on a heavy bag because I've been enjoying my. Um, I've been enjoying the accelerate the bench, the little bench because with the bench I'm able to talk you gotta have these things in the right position too You're not too far back not too far forward you, you know your uh, shoulders they can't be too far apart Even though that feels better. Can't be too close. Hmm? Can't be too close. Can y'all see these? Well, I gotta move back. I gotta get into the gym.
<laughs> but I'm sweating right there just from that. And the box got a different little exercises on it. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's nice. She said there's some parks with some exercise machines. Uh, yeah, I think Pelham Park is uh, they has um, exercise machines. Woo. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna bring this tripod back up and lock the legs again. Okay, so we could bring the bench back. Or, or we could get on a heavy bag, like my granddaughter said. I haven't been working on a heavy bag. <clears throat> That's the heavy bag she talking about. This is like one of the first things that move. Let me move this out the way. Mm. This is one of the first pieces of equipment because I'm sitting here watching Floyd Mayweather in the gym. And every time Floyd Mayweather's in the gym, when they record him, he'd be on a heavy bag, you know? I don't know if I got bored with it, and um, I got the air booster too. Mm. So, uh, bring that celery back up and get this chair out the way. And this, uh, uh, this right here, where I showed you how you bring the the pills into the cap and you turn it upside down, I think it's child safety. And drink a lot of water with these uh, supplements. Okay, she's already skinny, so she don't need to. <laughs> Are we trying to get this skinny? <laughs> Make a muscle. Let me see your muscles. Okay, watch out, because I only got a few minutes left. Uh, let, them sh let, let me show them the heavy bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to fight, but I just want to work out. <laughs> don't challenge me to no fight. <laughs> Did you see Floyd Mayweather? Um, the other day, I think it was yesterday, he put posted a video. <laughs> And so he was tapping, he was tapping a heavy bag. Tap, 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 tap. He was tapping a heavy bag and little uh, $100 bills was falling down, right? <laughs> and he was tapping it easy and the $100 bills was falling down. And then he started hitting it hard. And the bills started pouring down. <laughs> he beat out the strippers. The strippers that they, you know, they make it rain on the strippers. He beat them out. He had crazy money falling down. The harder he hit, he was going in. Pull it off the wall so it's not banging the wall. And 
karate school, we used to say kia. Yeah, 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 kia. Yeah. I can't do no push-ups, but we gonna get rid of this here. Some kind of way. Yeah, don't show my ass yet. I'm not ready yet. Uh, uh, uh. See, when you stay away from me for a while, <laughs> yeah, you be more enthused with it. You see the sweat coming off my face? This is in my house. This is in a corner. I'm in the hallway next to the bathroom. So basically, I'm in the bathroom. And after I finish this workout, it's hot tub time. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Don't pull my sticker. I want that to stay on. She already pulled my sticker off. We got a young man. We got a young man on it. <laughs> and good, perfect shape this everlast equipment you know i got the boxing gloves i got the little uh calisthenic karate little with the fingers is out this is what i use when i'm on a machine and then i got these for the bag for you know wrist protection uh. this is sweaty. Huh? This is sweaty. okay put them down Put them down. Yeah, I, I guess the karate gloves. Sit down. I, I guess the karate gloves is gonna. Um, I'm gonna need another pair of those because they not really destroyed. She said they sweaty, you know. Before I'm gonna need another pair of these because these are solid. Never last. Last forever. So if you get one of these. You got a big bucket. You see the black bucket at the bottom. You either put sand and rocks down there or you put, um, I put 16 ounce bottles of water. An off brand that I don't drink because I drink Poland Springs. So I put an off brand down there. Because if you put loose water down there, then it's, it's splashing around down there. It might get um, old and moldy and soiled and stuff like that. So. I didn't open the bottles. I just set the bottles down there like you storing bottles of water. Yeah. So it still got some movement. It's weighing it down. It still, you know, got some movement, but it's okay. Because I don't usually punch hard. I just try to exert. But you know, you can run in place and punch. <clears throat> You know, because the coronavirus got you in the house, not wanting to go outside and breathe that air and not wanting to run by everybody and be jogging by people and breathing everybody's air. So you could run in place, or you could just punch, or you could kick, or you could do a straight kick once my... <laughs> Once I, uh, I can't even really reach up there. Let me stop before I trip myself. Uh, I guess tomorrow I'll bring back the air booster. Okay, so we under a minute. Um, yeah, I give uh, my son and uh, Tamika Maori a break. Okay, because they got a, job, a hard job ahead of them. And you know yourself, you wouldn't want to put your life on the line and and not reap no benefits and not do no celebrating. So if they was at the Grammys, they should have won one. I don't know if they gave her one or not, but she should have won one. <laughs> uh, just
just for her activism. And, you know, I'm uh, proud of them and, you know, how far they have come and the attention um, that they uh, now is, you know, is turning into celebrity, you know, ism and she's at the Grammy. So, peace, y'all. I'm out. Leave her alone. Bye. <laughs>